before break, I remember giving you a problem like this, where we were going to integrate 4 minus x squared minus y squared dA. I guess what I don't remember is what the region was R. So I'm going to pause and look that up for a second. Um, let's suppose that my region R um, let's suppose that R here is a circle of radius 1 let's say a circle of radius 1 Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and integrate. And, and so what's the equation for a circle of radius 1, the unit circle? All right, well, in general, we do x squared plus y squared is equal to what? 1, right? Because in general, we know that we do x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? Now, like I said, this is a prime candidate for a problem that is easier to handle if we use polar coordinates. And this is the topic of chapter 15, section 3. Polar coordinates. And you guys used polar coordinates in Calc 2, right? There were time, do you remember how that worked? you would be integrating not with respect to x, but instead you would integrate with respect to what? Theta. Theta is correct. And so, you know, that was the first time that we had really seen, it's, it's really interesting, you have a, a different kind of Riemann sum in a way, right? So let me uh, draw a little reminder of how you did back in Calc 2. In Calc 2, if you wanted to find an area, what we would do is we would do, let's see if you remember the formula. You're going to integrate d theta. And I'll tell you what, instead of writing a and b, I'm going to write alpha and beta. Why? Think of them as angles, right? And so what you do then is you integrate, do you remember what it is you integrate? Well, yeah, it's, it's a function of theta squared. And then you put a one half out front. One half f of, this was the formula in Calc 2 that you probably made sure you knew for some test, right? And so we're going to want to kind of generalize these ideas today, right? The idea is that it was interesting that you said r squared, Sullivan, because you're right. I mean, the idea comes from this formula. The area of a sector, what's a sector? Sure, a wedge of a circle, a piece of a pie, right? The area of a sector, do you guys know the formula for that? It's one half pi, well, not really pi needed. You just need r squared theta, where theta is the, the angle, right? And the reason I say we don't need the, uh, what if theta equals two pi? Then you have 2 pi times a half is pi r squared, right? Then you have the area of the circle. So the, this is a believable formula that you can memorize, right? So this is the idea behind what we did in Calc 
2. I guess the only other thing I need to understand in Calc 2 is that what I did was I said R is a function of theta. And so that's, that's how polar coordinates work, right? Like if you take out a, a graphing calculator, yeah, and if you change the mode, so I'm going to do that now. Here, I'm going to open up a, a graphing calculator. Here we go. And I want to graph, right? So if I type the Y equals screen, it's all ready to graph some parabola for me. But if I type mode, and if I go down here, and if I switch over to the right and say POL, polar mode, now when I hit the Y equals screen, what does it say? R equals some function of theta. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so we did that back in, in Calc 1. So yeah, maybe you remembered it that way. One half R squared is kind of the formula. I guess what's happening also is that instead of theta, we have d theta because we're thinking of very small increments. Okay, so how does polar coordinates help us in Calc 2, I mean Calc 3? I mean now we have these double integrals and I'm saying polar coordinates, okay? Well, there's a couple nice things going on here that make me think, first of all, circles. We love circles, right? And secondly, this equation, right? x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? So when I'm seeing this integrand, 4 minus x squared plus, well, it says that. In my mind, I'm thinking double integral over r of 4 minus parentheses x squared plus y squared, what does that equal? x squared plus y squared? That's r squared in the world of, right? In the world of polar coordinates. So when you see this, you might think right away, well that x squared and y squared I can change into r squared. And that's kind of nice. It's going to make things go a little smoother, a little easier. All right. Um, but we still need a little more machinery, I guess. So, you know, again, this alpha and beta, those are values of what? They're angles, right? So, so after you integrate this crazy thing, then you plug in theta is alpha and theta is beta, right? You with me on that? Okay. I'm going to write down a formula that comes from your book, and hopefully it'll make some sense to you here. So let's integrate d theta later. I mean later. So a is 1 half integral alpha to beta d theta. And earlier, what's the other polar coordinate? The other polar coordinate is r. Let's integrate dr, right? But what is it that I want to integrate dr? Well, I'm going to integrate, and let's see if this makes sense to you, 2r. Now, wait a minute. Why? Well, because... Ah, what happens when you integrate 2r? What do you get? R squared, which is f of theta squared. So I still have an area formula, right? This says a. You guys with me? Okay. That means that my formula... for area in polar coordinates in calc 3 is given by what? Sure, we can cancel the 2 and the 1 half and we get A is equal to double integral. We'll go alpha to beta Oh, we need different, um, well, what should I say? I'll say 
this is f1 of theta and this is f2 of theta right and what is it that we're integrating we're just integrating r dr d theta me pirates right i'm going to integrate r dr d theta and somehow that's the same as same as what? How do you find area in Calc 3? We did this before break. If I told you to find the area, do you remember what function, what surface we wanted? One. So this is an important difference, right? If you want area in Calc 3 with dy dx, you integrate one. But if you want it with polar coordinates, you actually integrate r dr d theta. Now, I would say there's a kind of a better explanation of this in your book, but it's a little complicated. I'll show you a little bit of it. It has to do with Riemann sums again, which is how we justified before break dy uh, dx or dx dy. And so here's a problem they're doing. They're, they're finding, you know, z equals, oh, it's almost the same as mine, 9 minus x squared minus y squared, okay? And so they're going to talk about a polar rectangle. Now look at that. I claim that that little region there, that's like a wedge minus a wedge. You know how I've been saying top minus bottom, but today we've been doing right minus left? You guys remember that? What would be top minus bottom in the world of polar coordinates? Maybe you'd say, sure, outside minus inside. That's absolutely right. Okay? And so when they go to justify why is it that we integrate r dr d theta, right? Here's my function. If you want to integrate in the world of polar coordinates and you have a function of r and theta, we will do r dr d theta here, right? And their justification has to do with um, this picture here where they, they choose a point in the polar rectangle so that it's kind of halfway between this one and that one. And if you have a Riemann sum, they, they, they skip all the algebra here, but it works out that, that the R shows up. R delta R, delta, you can work it out. It's not hard, it's just long and ugly. Okay. So I think it's kind of nice. What I think is even nicer though, honestly, is the last section of chapter 15, which we're not ready for yet change of variables in multiple integrals. But I'm just going to preview what is going to happen, okay? So the book is talking about this being a polar rectangle, right? What do they mean, polar rectangle? Well, they mean r is between two values and theta is between two values. Kind of like in the world of a regular rectangle, what does that mean? Well, it means that x is between, I've been saying, a and b, and y is between what? c and d. Is that a good explanation of a rectangle? You could just use inequalities? That's a rectangle, right? I mean, that explains it. Well, polar rectangle, the only difference is we're using r and theta. Now, what did I say I want to put theta between? What values did I use? Alpha and beta instead of a and b, just to emphasize that those are angles, but they, they play the same role. And now, what about r? Well, the way that's going to work it's between these curves, which I called in my integral here, I called f1 of theta and f2 of theta. And that is kind of what's going to happen. You'll have, a, you'll have functions of theta. But what we're going to learn at the end of this chapter 
is how you can do this. How you can take a rectangle and transform it into a polar rectangle. And that's called a change of variables. And when you do a change of variables, there's a computation you need to do to say what happens to dA. Here, dA we know is just dy dx, let's say. But here, it turns out that dA we will compute is r dr d theta. So if you want more of the story, I kind of feel like you have to wait until 15.7. And then we'll have it all clean for you. If you don't like either of the explanations we had so far. But for now, can we just use the formula r d r d theta? Me pirates, we're ready to try an example, so let's do what we're going to do here. Here, I guess we're going to integrate this function over the unit circle, is what I said I wanted to do. All right, let's do it. So, should I draw a sketch? Yeah, probably. Let's draw a little sketch for you of what's going on. Um, let's see. Here's the world. Here's X. Here's Y. Here's Z. What's this here? That's my region R, right? My unit circle in the plane. Does that look okay to you guys? Now, the surface... We said we're doing the double integral over r. Didn't I say 4 minus x squared minus y squared? Do you? Okay. And r is the unit circle. So the surface itself is what shape? Paraboloid, right? It goes all the way up to 0, 0, 4. It goes down from there. It kind of intersects here and here, and it kind of intersects there and there. But I guess... We're only doing it over the unit circle, so somehow, basically, I'm finding the, uh, you know, I'm integrating this function, but not, it's, it's only over that uh, region, right? So I guess that, I guess I'm finding the volume of uh, this stuff, right? a silo. Right? Okay, so how do we do it? We make the change of variables. And so dA is going to be replaced by what? R dr d theta. This 4 minus x squared minus y squared. By the way, you will see people do this. This is overkill, what I'm doing right now. I'm going to do it, though, because you'll, you'll experience it tonight. You'll say, oh, I know what x is. It's R cosine theta. And I know what y is. What am I going to put? R sine theta. Why is that overkill? You get 4 minus, if you factor out the r squared, what's left? 1. Cosine squared plus sine squared. Okay, so we do understand that what we have to integrate here is 4 minus r squared. So far, there's nothing really challenging, except that maybe this is challenging. Let's see. Let's see. Can we put the values we need uh, in for r and in for theta, right? Um, let's do theta first. Remember how theta has to be between two values? What, what values would I want here? So that's actually a cool idea. I mean, 0 to 2 pi might be your natural choice, but why not? Why not say that this is going to equal 4 times the integrand from 0 to pi over 2? Yeah, then, then when we do that, we're only going from here to here, and then we're saying there's symmetry, so why not multiply by 4? I like that strategy. Okay, what about the inner function? Well, I guess um, we need functions of theta. Oh, well, this is... Remember the difference between 15.1 and 
Wasn't 15.1 a lot easier because you just had numbers? Well, guess what, guys? This example, I have a number, right? I mean, how far out are we going? One, right? Because I'm integrating over the units. And how far in? Zero. Yeah, Paul, you better do another example. This is not going to cut it for these guys tonight. Um, I guess what I have here when I distribute the R, I have 4R minus R cubed, right? dr d theta. So you'll have to distribute that R or integrate by parts. No, let's not do that. All right, here we go. So we get 4 integral from 0 to pi over 2. When I integrate 4R, I get 2R squared minus 1 fourth <laughs> R to the fourth. And I'm going from R equals 0 to R equals 1. Oh, this one, it does work out nicely. When I plug in the 1, I get 2 minus a fourth is 1.75. So let's see, this equals 4 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1.75 d theta. Oh, okay. So that's 4 times 1.75 theta from 0 to pi over 2. When you plug in the 0, you get 0. So we just have to do 4 times pi over 2. There's 2 pi. 2 times 1.75 is 3.5. I'm getting 3.5 pi. <coughs> OK, that's a nice answer. I think it's time. Oh, time to go, eh? <laughs> well, at least you have one example.